Good evening, guys. This is Dr. Paul. Once again, thanks for taking some time tonight to visit our website and uh, watch this video. As always, we encourage you to visit us at uh, www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net, where we have posted hundreds of videos covering so many topics that are useful as you prepare for your USML examination. Incidentally, these videos are also useful for regular people who wants to know more about these diseases which are so prevalent in our society. Tonight, I want to talk a few minutes about Irritable Bowel Syndrome. Irritable Bowel Syndrome, it is the most commonly diagnosed GI condition. In fact, it is the most commonly referred GI condition to a gastroenterologist. It is characterized by, number one, chronic abdominal pain. Number two, altered bowel habits. It, it, it alters with diarrhea and constipation. And number three, there is no organic disorder in these people. Now, symptoms and signs. There is cramping, abdominal pain that almost comes daily in some people. There is bloating, constipation, and diarrhea. And also, these people have a feeling of incomplete evacuation. They go to restroom. They spend so much time, but they go come out with a feeling of incomplete evacuation and also nocturnal pain many people have nocturnal abdominal pain and the long run they suffer from weight loss and stress now diagnosis first of all look for stress any loss of job or any loss of uh, a friend or a relative's death these are the important things there is no specific test to diagnose this condition. You should always re uh, rely on patient's history. Patient's history is number one thing. Then, if there is antibiotic use, you go for Clostridium difficile test. If there is uh, uh, any possibility of giardiasis, you go for stool culture. If there is any family history and the patient is uh, an elderly male or female, you go for colonoscopy to rule out cancer or, uh, or a papilloma, those, like, those kind of things. And if there is uh, a possibility of celiac disease, you investigate in this direction using uh, gluten elimination diet, such things. Now, how do you treat this condition? Most importantly, the physician-patient therapeutic relationship is very, very important because irritable bowel syndrome is a chronic disorder and many people don't get anything out of it. So uh, there should be a compassionate relationship. And you can also use antispasmodic uh, uh, agents like hyoscyamin, then antidepressants like amitriptyline, desipramine, paroxetine, fluoxetine. If the patient has any depression, you should treat it. The patients uh, uh, can also use antidiarrheal -di agents like loperamide or 5-HT3 receptor antagonists like allocetron, andocetron, salonsetron and 5-HT4 receptor agonists like tagacerot and stress management using counseling, support, regular exercise, prayer, all those things will come. So treatment involves so many steps. Now let me recap a few important points. What is the clinical hallmark of irritable bowel syndrome? It is the change in bowel habits alternating between diarrhea and constipation. And the most useful tool in the diagnosis of IBS is patient's history. That's very, very important. You need to identify patient's history. And also another cr cr criteria is abdominal pain should be present for at least 12 weeks in the previous 12 months. So patient should complain abdominal pain for at least 12 weeks in the last 12 months and the symptom common to all patients with, with IBS is abdominal pain. IBS does not harm the intestines and it does not lead to cancer. So if the patient asks you, is there any risk for cancer as I have this IBS problem? The answer is no, because inflammatory, uh, sorry, uh, irritable bowel syndrome does not increase the risk of cancer unlike inflammatory 
Bowel syndrome, which is another case, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, those things they increase the risk of uh, cancer. But um, uh, irritable bowel syndrome does not carry the risk of uh, cancer in patients. Now, let us see a case. A 25 year old female came to you with abdominal pain for the last four months and she says that uh, she has a sausage or snake-like stools and um, she has diarrhea alternating with constipation and she says that my family doctor did every test under the sun to diagnose but nothing was found in any of the tests what is the most probable diagnosis the most probable diagnosis is inflammatory bowel syndrome so inflammatory uh, sorry irritable bowel syndrome so don't confuse between irritable bowel syndrome and uh, inflammatory bowel syndrome both are very very different they are worlds apart and uh, i hope those things help basically remember its uh, prevalence it is the most commonly diagnosed gi condition then remember the signs and symptoms abdominal pain at least for 12 weeks in the previous 12 months then bloating constipation diarrhea weight loss and stress a feeling of incomplete evacuation after passing a watery stool or a liquid stool and also some patients say they have sausage shaped or snake like stools so all of these are signs of irritable, uh, um, irritable bowel syndrome. Then diagnosis, there is no specific diagnostic test. Patient's history is the most important thing. And if you see abdominal pain which is chronic, then you should always suspect irritable bowel syndrome. Then if the history suggests any other associated features you should go along and do some more tests as i said if the patient has recent antibi antibiotic use you should test them for clostridium difficile toxin assay if the patient has a uh, celiac disease you should test, test them for gluten sensitivity if the patient has history of uh, cancer or family history of uh, colon cancer then you should do a colonoscopy to rule out cancer in these patients and when we uh, go to the treatment, as I said, on the top of the list is a physician-patient therapeutic relationship because this causes so much stress and the patient should understand that's a chronic condition and the physician should be compassionate and understanding towards the patient. Number two, you can use antidiarials like loperamide then 5-HT3 receptor antagonists and 5-HT4 receptor agonists and uh, then antidepressants all of those medications they play a role in this problem that's about irritable bowel syndrome if you have any questions you can send them to me and uh, you can also post your comments under our videos as always you can visit uh, our website at uh, www.usmlvideos.net this is dr paul serving humanity through medical education thank you god bless you